troopers have arrived. Time to piss off some people. Carmageddon is a racing game developed by Stainless Games with publishing done by SCI and Interplay. The game was released for DOS on June 30th, 1997 with a release on several platforms including PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and a more recent release on mobile devices. The game was mostly known for its controversial gameplay, but also known as an early example of sandbox 3D racing, meaning that you can go wherever you want. Interestingly, the game was inspired from the 1975 film Death Race 2000 starring Sylvester Stallone. If that wasn't enough, the film was actually based on a screenplay called The Race written by Im Melchior, and the cherry on top? There was a game called Death Race. So what's the story? To be honest, there is none. It's just a matter of racing and surviving. That's all. While I am aware that some racing games do have a plot, the vast majority of them don't. Going back to what I was saying earlier about the gameplay, this game got a lot of attention from the media. It's mainly because you not only kill people and animals, but also get credit for doing so. But on the flip side, do you have to kill? No, you don't. But the game will be a lot harder if you don't. It really was no surprise that the UK wanted this game banned, and I don't blame them. Craig Pope, former member of parliament of Hinburn, wanted this game banned as well. So what happened? The game was temporarily banned, but was later restored uncensored. The graphics in this game are quite good. From the 3D model cars to the 2D sprites of the pedestrians, they're well done and the animation flows smoothly. The environments at first are impressive, but they tend to lose their luster as the game progresses. The course layouts are also well done, but you'll get a sense of deja vu as you make progress. I say this because there are no boundaries, meaning that you can go off course and explore to your little heart's content. At the same time, you'll recognize some areas from a previous race. If there's one word to describe the audio, it's bland. The voices aren't too bad, but it's the music that kills the game. It's nothing more than generic cheesy metal music. It gets repetitive and dull fast. One thing that should have been included is uploading your own songs to the game. It may have sounded like a lot of work for 1997, but in my opinion, it would have been a nice feature. Besides, wouldn't you rather listen to the Blue Danube while running over pedestrians? Never mind. At first you only get a choice of two cars and each performs differently. Is there a way to unlock more cars? Yes there is, but it boils down to two things, your rank and luck. If you waste the right vehicle within a specific rank, that car becomes yours. The only other way to unlock vehicles is to complete the game. The gameplay is where this game shines, but not in terms of killing things for points in time. The physics are very well done and the controls are responsive. In fact, you only need one hand to play the game as the controls are at the numeric keys. So with your other hand, you can drink, text, read, or whatever your little heart desires. Going back to killing things for points in time, what you get depends on difficulty. The harder the difficulty, the less points in time you get. Speaking of which, I find the names of the difficulties rather dumb. Why not just name them easy, normal, and hard? Anyways, you also get points based on how you kill each pedestrian and how many you kill at one time. You also get points and time for crashing into your opponents and an even bigger bonus for wasting them. There are also power-ups to aid or hinder your race. The most common are the add time and add points barrels. There are others like invulnerability, electro zap, and so on. You also get a map to aid you in your race. Because there are no rules, you can get lost easily, even with directional arrows. At the end of each race, whether you pass all checkpoints, waste all opponents, or kill all pedestrians, you get bonus credits and also credits taken away from repairs. When your rank hits a specific milestone, you can purchase upgrades from armor that reduces damage, power that makes you go faster, and offense that increases damage done to opponents. Speaking of rank, your rank only goes up if you accumulate a lot of credits. The more you get, the more rank you go up. As you go up, you'll unlock more races, but keep in mind that you can only have five races available at a time. The whole review boils down to one question. Is that all you do? The answer is yes. This is all you do. There's not even a time trial, which is really unusual because most racing games have a time trial. You can turn pedestrians off to make the game less violent, but it's senseless. I remember Adam Sepsler made two good points when he reviewed Manhunt. 
quote, this game is violent, so if little Timmy wants this game for his birthday, just say no. And for maximum violence to be effective, there needs to be contrast. This game has none. It's a one-trick pony in a small corral, unquote. Might as well be bumper cars regardless if there are pedestrians or not. Overall, Carmageddon is a shallow game. With little depth and variety, I'd recommend this game only if you can't find a decent racing game for PC. Carmageddon gets 3 stars out of 5. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out these two beauties right here. If you want to subscribe to my videos, click this button here. And if you want to see more of my videos, click this button over here.